Let's look at another example. This is a, a more real-life example. It's kind of an interesting problem. Um, go to page 352 in your textbook. Let's read that. Very exciting problem. It's about a cup of water in a room. Whoa. <laughs> Actually, the, ma the math behind this is just kind of complicated. I had to do problems like this in my master's course last semester. It's just a cup of water. Who cares? Cup of water, but it, it makes a difference though, because how you solve this problem is the same way you solve a problem like if you walked into, um, like, I don't know, Walmart at midnight and you saw a dead body on the floor and you like felt it and it was like a particular temperature and you knew like the ambient temperature of the room, you could figure out, you could like backtrack when that body was killed based on its temperature and based on the temperature of the room. So I know this problem seems kind of strange because it's just a cup of water and who cares? But it's the same way you would solve a problem like that. So if you came across a dead person, you could tell how long they've been there? Yeah. So if you come across a dead person, the first thing you do is pull out the cup of water. Your thermometer. Just, just hold that in mind for a second. I've always wanted to do something like this. Maybe I should call the police. No, 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 no. No, no. It'll just get colder. i got to do this right now. <laughs> Okay, a cup of water is heated to 100 degrees Celsius and then allowed to cool in a room with an air temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The temperature T in Celsius is measured every minute as a function of time, M, in minutes, and these points are plotted on a coordinate grid. It is found that the temperature of the water decreases exponentially at a rate of 25%, that should tell you something about C, every five minutes, okay, which is pretty fast. Well, at least for a cup of water. A smooth curve is drawn through the points, resulting in the graph that you see just to the right there. Okay? Our first job is to create the transformed exponential function in the form um, y equals a times c to the b times x minus h plus k. Okay? We need some kind of transformed function in that form. Okay? So what I've done is I've just kind of highlighted some of the sentences mentioned in that little story there to help us figure out some of those parameters, some of those transformations. Okay, so we start with this, y equals c to the x. We're probably going to have to figure out c, the rate at which that cup of water is cooling. And then we're going to have to figure out maybe a, b, h, and k. Okay? So, one sentence I want you to pay attention to is, um, it's in a room with an air temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What parameter would that be? Or would that be C? K. Why K? Um, so that's vertical translation. It's a vertical translation, but why would I care about translating this thing 20 units up? Because if it's not going to naturally uh, get like go below room temperature in a room. Exactly, right? I have a cup of water and I put it in a room. It wouldn't make sense if that cup of water got colder than 20 degrees Celsius. So it's independent. Right? So the, the temperature that it's going to be cooling to will be 20 degrees, the temperature of the room. Right? It's not going to get any colder than that. Okay, so we've got our first transformation, K. So K is 20. So we've got y equals c to the x plus 20. Good? Okay, hint number two, it says the temperature decreases exponentially at a rate of 25%. That should be pretty obvious what that is telling us. That's telling us c. So how do we choose an appropriate value for c? If I decrease 25% every five minutes, okay, what am I going to choose for c? That would grow by 25%. Zero point, zero point, sorry? 0.75. Right? It'll be 0.7, it'll be 75% of what it was five minutes ago. Every five minute interval, right? So C is going to be 0 0.75. Okay, we're getting closer now. So we've got Y equals 0 0.75 to the X plus 20. Actually, we should be using maybe use T. Yeah, they're using time, so we should use T for X. Okay. 
Good so far. Every five minutes, this is probably the toughest part about this, it decreases at a rate of 25% every five minutes. Go for it. A. Not A, no. Which of those transformations would this be? Would it be? Would it be? B. B. It's going to be B, okay? But we got to think about how to do this. we got to think about how to do this, okay? Um, every five minutes, I want my temperature to drop or decrease 25% or, or to become 75% of what it was before. So how could I, what should I write for B? Should I just write 5T? Let's see if that works, okay? Just focusing on uh, this part here for a moment. 5T, let's see if that works. 0 0.75 to the power of 5T, okay? And then we'll let T be 5 for the first 5 minutes. And let's see what happens. Let's, let's choose a, a temperature for the water here. We'll just use something arbitrary. Let's say the temperature of the water was like 20 degrees Celsius, okay? And I want it to drop 75% of what it was 5 minutes ago, so I put in 5 for T. That would be 20 times 0 0.75 to the power of 25. What does that mean there? Maybe just punch it on your calculator. Right? Do the do the exponent first and then multiply it by 20. Do you get an insanely tiny number? Okay, so that's saying that the 20 degrees Celsius water, the arbitrary cup of water that I chose, went from um, 20 degrees Celsius to, would you have like point, point zero 0.01 degrees Celsius in five minutes? That doesn't seem to make sense. That's not 75% of what it was before. So 5T isn't going to work. That's the point I'm trying to make. We can't put this as 5T. 5 over 60? You're a little closer. Check this out. If I put T over 5, think about what that means. Okay? Maybe I'll maybe we'll just do some some uh, some test points here. If I put T over 5 and I set up this situation again. You see it now? No. No? Okay, put it to the power of 1 over 5. That's 1 minute. Okay? Will it be 75% 75, 75 of what it was? No. No. Okay? Not yet. What if I do 2 minutes? It shouldn't yet, right? Okay, and then I could do 3 minutes, 4 minutes. But by the time I get to 5 minutes, notice what happens. When I get to 5 minutes, that gives me 5 over 5, which is just 1. Why does that make sense? That's when it will decrease, or that's when it will be 25% less. Right? So if you put T over 5, every time T hits multiple of 5, in this case just 5, but when it hits 10, it'll be 25% decreased twice or it'll decrease by 25% twice. By the time it hits 15, it'll decrease by 25% three times. Get the idea? Okay, so that's why we want T over five. Okay, so this is where we are right now. I'm just gonna continue from there. Okay, next hint. Uh, they say, oh sorry, this isn't anything mentioned in the graph, but uh, I wanted you to notice that the graph started up really, really high on the y-axis. So there's probably some kind of vertical stretch by a factor of a. Do you guys know how to find that vertical stretch? No? Okay. Um, give you a little bit of a hint. Uh, if I take the equation that I have right now, okay, just y equals 
0 0.75 to the power of t plus 20, and I'm going to assume there's an a factor. Okay? Maybe that assumption means a little bit, or it seems a little bit ridiculous. Graph this on your calculator just without the a, and see if it matches what they have in the book. Okay? Just graph it on your calculator without putting a in there. Don't put a there. Just 0.75 to the power of t, and then add 20. What page is this on? It's 352. Okay, your window settings should be 0 to 100, 0 to 100 for x and y. doesn't it look the same? No. Okay. The graph in your book should look a little taller, right? So that should tell you that you do have a vertical stretch factor. The question is how to find that, right? What you can do is you can use a point that you know exists on the transformed function, a really easy point like 0 and 100, right? 0, 100, that's just the y-intercept, right? Okay. So I'm going to put in 0, 100 in for t and y. Okay, so that's 100 for y. A is going to stay there. I'm going to solve for it in a moment. 0 for t plus 20. This is going to be really easy to solve. With me? Okay. So then I, uh, I'm going to go over here. 100 equals a times... All of this to the power of zero, what is that? One. Just one, right? So I just left with a plus 20. So a is 80. Okay. So now we've got y equals 80 times 0 0.75 plus 20. 0.75 is to the, sorry, oh, t over 5. Oops. That wouldn't change any of our calculations because 0 over 5 is still 0. Graph it on your calculator, make sure it works. It's good? Okay. So what does 80 have to do with all this? You've got a cup of water in a room that's 20 degrees Celsius and it's decreasing at 25% every five minutes. What does the 80 have to do with it? Yeah. What is what the temperature of the water was to start with? It started at 100. Oh. Yeah. Why 80? Eighty is the initial difference between the water's temperature and the room's temperature, right? Water temperature was one hundred, room was eight twenty. The difference is eighty. So there we go. There's our transformed function.